Seven years after joining Lazard, our next guest will now head the firm and is promising to double the company's revenues in the next seven years, uh, details of which he laid out in a public memo to employees a couple of weeks ago. Uh, here now with an exclusive interview to discuss uh, his new role, the state of government, the markets, the economy, and so much more. Peter Orzag, the new CEO of Lazard. Here's also the former director of the Office of Management and Budget under President Obama. Will you, will you always have that as a title? Is that something you think that will always come with, or we should just call you the head of Lazard? We can do it either way, but I'm the head of Lazard, and that's exciting going forward. I immediately, oh. I immediately did the rule of 72 on doubling it in seven years. There we go. 10% a year yeah. growth and revenue. He's got the math thing. He's yes. got the math thing. Yeah. That, that sounds good. That, I don't it's, know if that's aggressive. I, I think that's doable for you, you with your that, smarts. Well, what, what I was going to ask for. you, though, is how doable do you think it is in the next, it, what do you think the next two or three years are going to look like, given where we are in the economy and what seems like a challenge ahead, or do you think actually not? Well, we're obviously in a quiet period for you know, right. the immediate quarter, but looking forward, uh, we, we picked 2030 on purpose because it will take some time for the market to come back, but we do think, I, I was on uh, this channel yep. maybe a month ago saying that uh, we think the M&A market is bottoming out, but there will be a lag before there's more announcements, and then there's another lag before the announcements become revenue. What's the biggest shift you think you're making? Uh, we're upping our ambition, um, and so on both sides of the business, more of a, uh, a focus on growth, including uh, relevance, revenue, and returns. And I think there's a lot of opportunity on both sides, both assets. What does that mean in terms of fundamentally changing the company? Uh, first, focus on culture. Uh, being commercial and collegial is the key, but uh, it means that we are looking for opportunities on both sides of the business to expand what we do. And who do you think your biggest competitor is? Well, it depends on the asset management side of the business. There is no one else uh, that is like Lazard. On the advisory uh, side of the business, we compete not only against the top tier of the bulge bracket firms, but there are, as you know, a series right. of new independent firms. And then on the asset management side of the business, there are a bunch of firms. There's no one who has our combination so, or our history, for that matter. Um, we've been talking a lot this morning about the government shutdown. That didn't happen. You've spent a lot of time with yes. government thinking about that. I, did you think we were going into a shutdown this week? I did. And, you know, uh, I think this is a gutsy move by McCarthy. Um, to, I think it must have been that he judged that he wouldn't be any better off after a week or 10 days of uh, a shutdown and might as well um, bite the bullet. And what's interesting here is there's at least the potential, I don't say the likelihood, but the potential for a bit of a new era of depolarization if he has to rely on Democrats to keep his job, you may see uh, a bit more of the middle governing. That would be nice. Yeah, could he be a Speaker of the House instead of a Speaker of the GOP? There you House? go. What a, exactly. what a concept. What I mean, concept. I think he needs to be... I mean, I, I have a personal relationship with him, and he thinks long and hard about, about these things, but that took... I mean, it's a great personal risk to, to do it It was that a gutsy way. move. But it, need, but it had to be done. Yes. It had to be done. Yeah. And look, it, coming back to the point, let's hope um, the country obviously has polarized. I just saw Paul Ryan last week and reminded him he introduced me at my confirmation hearing as budget director. Can you imagine that happening today? Would never happen, not him personally, but a Republican Congress. Um, what do you think the chances are see that the McCarthy gets voted out, though? Again, I think it's, un, it's, it's hard to tell. I, what I hope happens, though, just to be blunt, is I do hope that Democrats step forward and keep him as speaker because both because I don't think there's a better alternative right now and because there's at least the potential. He doesn't want to be there for, well, this What's is he going to have to agree to to get This is what Moody says that they may downgrade the debt rating for the United States if we can't have some sort of cooperation and governance that actually a government that actually governs. You know, this this would go a long way if you can actually get things done towards appeasing some of the credit rating agencies and the problems that they see with us. Not, not that it I, I gets spending. Get would, would, would you, would you, would you advise the Democrats not to just rake him over the coals with concessions for what they want? Uh, or would you, or fish got to swim, birds got to fly? I, I think this they got to do that, right? Personally, I think this. Look, I'm not in government anymore. It's their job, not mine. But you're from really my, in the from private my, sector. From my right? perspective, right. I think this is a moment to be a bit bigger and not to. Uh, so that, what do you do? Never happen. What do you do about? <laughs> no, let me ask you a serious yeah. question. How would you think about funding on the Ukraine issue? Because that's sort of a fundamental or the issue, that's sort of at the middle. 
yeah. or the border, frankly, both. And, and I do think that. Uh, I think there's, there's, by the way, there's more bipartisan support for the border than there is for Ukraine at this moment. But on yeah. both issues, but let's just talk about Ukraine for a moment. Obviously, crucially important, our standing in the world, in my opinion, uh, relies in part on our continued support for the, the effort there. And I am hopeful that as part of the machinations, again, I'm one step removed now, uh, there were also discussions, as I think there were, about how to get funding for Ukraine done over the you know, the, the, the next, next 45 days, the next 45 days. What about the border? I'm not as sure on the border, but we'll see. Um, where do you th what, Jay Powell yep. at this point? What is what is the House view at Lazard about what he's going to do over the next call it, 12 months? Are you well, ready? I don't think it's the House view. I mean, he, I think he said pretty clearly he's not he's going higher for longer. Um, as I think you may know, I think that's a mistake myself, but I think he's been very clear and the markets are now only, only now starting to believe him that he's just going to stay there. Right. But if he stays there, by the way, doesn't this make your job now that you're running Lazard that much harder? I mean, this was sort of where I was going with like what the next year or two looks like. It does. Because if he really is that high, it's going to impact equity prices. It'll impact the confidence issue that you deal with right. when it comes to M&A, IPOs, the, the, the whole sort of gamut. Agreed, although I think the bigger headwind has been the uncertainty over the rate path as opposed to just the level. If rates were high but steady, it's not, uh, it's not as good for deal activity and other uh, forces as if rates are low. But if they're steady, that's actually... But if they're steady and they stay high, do they ever break something? I mean, that's the other component part, which is we've had a number of guests yeah. come on and said, look, at some point, even if they're steady, if they, if they remain at these levels on a persistent well, basis, Think about all of the mortgages that are, you know, we were talking about mortgages this morning. Commercial real the, estate. The, 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 right, the, the commercial real estate deals. Even but hold yeah. the maturity. So they, they, you have seven-year, ten-year arms and things that all of a sudden roll off. So this is, I think, what we need to worry about with regard to the economy, which is the consumer has held up to date. The impact of, uh, the lagged impact of all the rate increases that are still yet to kind of hit the economy because that takes some time is what we need to be watching for.